never see the dawn. I would describe Sleep No More as an immersive experience in a giant building where uh, you are somewhat lost, but also guided through a story of Macbeth and adaptations of other inspirations that fill in um, multiple narratives that happen in the space. I would describe Sleep No More as being plopped into a movie and, and you get to choose the character that maybe goes off screen and you're really interested in what that character is going to do. Maybe you never see them again in the movie, but in, in this story you get to choose to follow that character and, and see where their, where, their journey, where their journey leads. Um, my suggestion to anybody coming to see the show, especially if it's your first time, is to either see it alone or to separate from the people that you came with. We like to say that you can be the hero of your own story in the space and that you can really take control of whatever narrative you want to follow. Um, and if you attach too much to another mm -hmm. person, you might find that you're, you're kind of locked into a shared experience that kind of disallows you from getting to everything that you might have wanted to see. Sometimes a character might go running in a certain direction and you've just got to go follow them. Um, and if somebody else can't keep up with you, you gotta say goodbye. And you'll always see them at the end or maybe you'll run into them at some point in the middle, but my biggest suggestion is to experience it as solo as possible and to just go for the ride. There's a lot of scenery to look at um, and then at some point you will stumble upon a character and be able to follow somebody's narrative. I think there's nothing better than um, splitting up with someone and then re-meeting back up you know, during the show in the hotel and, and being like, and then and then venturing to the bar and taking your mask off and saying, what did you see? Oh, I saw that. And then having the opportunity to seek out what they saw, you know, because you have that opportunity to leave and take a break. Um, I also think having no agenda and just come and following your instincts is probably the best way to do it because who, who knows what you're going to find and, and where that character might lead you or like Amadi said, the scenery might take you and what dots you can put together for yourself. I think making up your own story is such a part of this and the work is um, somewhat literal, but also very abstract. So we give you the opportunity to put the pieces together in, in your head and then whatever story you come up with is, is the right story. My name is Carolyn Boyd and I'm the Director of Performance and Production for Sleep No More. I think I've always thought about it as um, very well organized chaos. Um, you know, everything that goes into the organization and the running of the show is sort of trying to um, mitigate and have a plan for as much as you can control. But the beauty of it is also that the show is never the same night to night. Uh, every different audience brings an entirely different element to the show. So every night, um, and I think this is also sort of the beauty of what keeps people working on the production for so long, is that every single show can be wildly different from the one before. And it's really all um, geared and, and what the audience brings to the experience. Yeah, we spent uh, the majority of the of the pause thinking and planning for how you could possibly come back uh, still inside of the pandemic. And it was it was about a two year exercise um, kind of going through every element of the show. Um, so many things about this are uh, more difficult to control than you than you know, a proscenium show. And then there are also some advantages actually to this kind of work. Um, versus a proscenium show in these times. Um, but the team, uh, we have an amazing team that really went through every single element of the show, both from the guest experience and the staff members experience. And um, we've made lots and lots and lots of small adjustments to the show, which I think even like a returning you know, fan from before watching it, um, probably unless you have a very keen eye, probably wouldn't notice any of these things. Because I think holistically the experience is still intact and you know adheres to all the original aesthetics of the show. I think that since the beginning I think that that mask has provided um, a level of anonymity that allows people to be free and, and feel like sometimes the freedom is great and sometimes the freedom can push a little too far and I think like it's it's great though that we give the opportunity to have that freedom that we're giving the power back to the audience you know, they're not, they don't feel judged to just watch a scene and then turn and leave. Like that's their, that's their own opinion and we don't know who they are. And I think that's probably the, one of the best things about having anonymity in that, in that white mask. I think the mask kind of removes a uh, periphery, which makes the, um, the whole experience more cinematic. 
for you. Like in terms of lens focus, like everything is so frontal um, and you really, you really don't have this space for yourself. Uh, and there's something about that that really lasers your focus into what's happening right in front of you. And I hope that audience, um, I, I really hope they get lost. And I mean that actually, like, I hope you get lost in this space because uh, you will find your way out eventually and it's fun to get lost in a somewhat unfamiliar space and, and not know what's going to happen if you turn this corner or that corner. But I also hope you can um, find a place to truly escape. I think that's why we have art and entertainment. We deal with, with, with dark things. Macbeth is a tragedy and mm -hmm. there's a lot of dark and even outside Macbeth, the other mm -hmm. influences that we bring in are, are dark stories that we're telling. Mm -hmm. But in that same instance, we want you to play. That's all, that's all we want you like the audience is a part of this. We don't do this if we don't have an audience. So when the audience is here, we, we want them to play and, and, and enjoy and be, be active as much as they want to be. Um, th th again, this doesn't exist without the audience and yeah. so it feels very much like we're excited that people get to come back and be and come through these doors and, and yeah, take away an experience that hopefully will we'll sit with them and last for them and then want them c to come back.